friends, welcome back. I hope you deeply, profoundly enjoyed the meditation suggested and given <clears throat> in the previous lesson. In this lesson, I want to clarify some fundamental concepts that plays a big role in the evolutionary cycle through the densities of a being. Again, the purpose of this chapter is to give you more context, more clarity, more of an expanded, deeper, more profound awareness of your relationship to the one and why you are being who you are being in a way. And what are some of those fundamental principles and polarities that are driving some of your desires, either for self or for being of service. So again, the purpose of this chapter is to humble you into understanding the beauty and the love of your connection to all the rest of yourself and to pr pristinely appreciate and value your ability to be of service to others, knowing that ultimately it is all yourself. Now, a fundamental principle throughout all of the densities, not necessarily all of the densities, but all of the densities up to six density and including a portion of six density, a very, very important aspect to understand or that beings are working with, which we have sort of in a way, like most things forgotten in this particular plane or density. <clears throat> and that is the concept of, or the understanding of service to self versus, or in addition to, or the option of service to others. Basically this forms the spiritual polarity of this universe. And so both ways are completely valid ways to express the one infinite creator and to reflect all these different options back to itself. I hear a cop car going off, which is in the distance, which is very appropriate. Service to others, service to self, chasing each other. This is exactly what is happening even in different densities. Now I understand that most people believe that past this dimensionality or past this density, <laughs> that cops and robbers no longer exist and that everything is peaceful and everything is harmonious. Yes, that is true for the civilizations or for the collective consciousnesses that choose to be service to others oriented and that aren't really necessarily mingling or minding businesses other than their own civilization at that time. So yes, there's definitely many, many hubs or collective consciousnesses or civilizations or places, if you want, or planets even, that are all oriented towards what our ideals today as human beings are, service to others, where that's all harmoniously integrated with each other and all that there really is between the, between the aspects of that overall consciousness is love, is compassion, is understanding, it's telepathic communication, it's vibrational understanding. And there is no malintent, there's no service to self intent in any of the beings. That does not mean, however, that these beings do not follow their own joy and their own inspiration. Service to self, or sorry, service to others does not mean that we have to sacrifice ourselves to the extent where we don't do anything that inspires us for the sake of other people, because then we're not actually having a holistic view of what enables us to be of service to others. Someone that is empowered in their own journey and inspiration is going to have that much more influence on others, is going to have that much more power to be of service to others. So someone that is imbalanced in the direction of service to others, for example, will, will basically destroy their own vehicle. Like when we're talking about this density of this, what we call an incarnational experience, you will see that those that have too much of a striving, an imbalanced striving towards service to others, they will become martyrs of some kind. They will try to bypass for a very long time everything that makes them tick, that empowers them, that gives them further strength and nourishment. And so by doing so, they will become martyrs and they will ultimately in some way severely detriment their own vehicle and therefore their ability or shorten their ability to be of service to others, or they will eliminate the bodily vehicle altogether through say rash action in service of others. Now, sometimes that can be really balanced and aligned and come from one's thematic experience, but oftentimes 
it is in a sense an overcompensation for believing that other beings do not have their own higher selves and their own journeys that are also taking care of them. So we have to balance in a way, we have to find a really good balance between love and wisdom. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in a later lesson in this chapter. But we have to understand that to be of service to others, we need to actually understand our own inspiration and feel free enough to act on that as well and see that everyone has their own higher self. Now the principle again of service to others and service to self forms the spiritual polarity of this universe, of the cycles through the densities. And so in third density, we are given the choice. In many ways, it's the density of choice. It's where beings start to wake up to the fact that they are evolutionary beings, that they are spirit beings, that they are eternal beings, and that they are on an evolutionary journey, not just within this one expression of a life, not just with this one single brain, but that they have a bigger being that is on a journey. As soon as they start to wake up to the fact that they have choice and that they're on a journey, on a greater journey, what starts to be activated is their free will. They start to become less automatic, less like animals in a way, and they become more self-reliant, more self-aware and more independent in their choices. So now people start to create a lot of catalysts for themselves and squeeze that into this third density cycle and put it all out there so that it's a very concentrated, intense time to where we are inspired to choose our orientation in a way that doesn't mean that we cannot change our orientation later on we always can but this definitely is the density of our initial choice to decide whether we see or feel like being of service to others or being mostly service to self oriented in a very negatively oriented way meaning through enslavement and domination and conquest etc so by service to self i don't mean people that you know like to take a bath every night and, and, and enjoy an hour of time by themselves. That's not what I mean by service to self. That is still very much part or can be, depending on how it's used, service to others orient in a service to others orientation. Uh, service to self, what I mean by that is really those beings that see the greatest value in enslaving other people in or beings or creatures or planet Earth and Basically, it's all about gain for the self at the expense of other selves. That's what I mean by service to self. And obviously, we've seen a lot of those explorations as well in the past few millennia on this planet. And these types of beings can gather and harness a lot of free will, a lot of power, a lot of spiritual power, and therefore a lot of power to manifest and execute, sometimes more quickly or rapidly than service to others uh, beings tend to accumulate or amass free will. So what you'll see is that it's been very off balance in many ways, where even though there's been, um, in a sense, more people oriented or desiring to be oriented to service to others, there have been very powerful service to self oriented beings. So we're on a mixed planet. Now this is all very, very rapidly resolving itself as we speak. Okay, that's why this technology is out here. That's why these lessons can be given in this way. That's why we have this community going, for example. But there's many other examples in the world of how this is resolving itself. Millennia, millennia of service to others versus service to self all being bunched together on a single collective, within a single collective consciousness is highly disruptive and highly catalytic and therefore highly potent and beneficial for the expansion and the waking up of the one infinite creator to itself in the form of a collective consciousness that we call humanity on planet earth. So we've been again souped together with a lot of service to self people and service to others beings. And so we have been working through this conflict, trying to find resolution for ages, or, but there is these conflicting intentions. Now, like I said, the whole polarity of planet Earth is shifted and has already been decided to be shifting into a positive orientation. And so those negatively oriented beings will no longer be able to sustain themselves within this dimensional growth of our civilization and planet. So their time is very, very limited. That's why, especially now you might see some, maybe less in a way, but more specific, more powerful outbursts 
of negativity. They're all being released very rapidly because it's kind of like cornering a cat, you know, it's like it's gonna fight back rapidly. It knows that its days are, are coming to an end. So you'll see when you open your eyes, when you open your inner eye, when you look at planet Earth, you will see that we are actually awakening to a very harmonious civilization that is service to others oriented. Again, with the inclusion of one's own excitement and inspiration. But the attitude is not that I need to take away anything from anyone else to be able to manifest or empower myself in any way. I can give and empower myself through being of service to other beings. So I want you to check in with yourself and see what your orientation in life at this point is. And I'm very much assuming that it is service to others oriented. Um, but by checking in with yourself, you can purify yourself even more in the direction of service to others. And why am I even suggesting this? I'm suggesting this both from a selfless point of view of being able to actually establish the planet that we desire as a species, but also it has some personal perks and bonuses to you as a soul on a journey. Polarization into a particular direction of either service to self or service to others is actually the amassing of free will. What I mean by that is that we are gaining, regaining our free will. Our, you can also call it spiritual power or spiritual awareness. And it's literally amplifying and accelerating and charging up our journey that expands beyond just this life. So by using this life in a very polarizing way, now I don't mean separating way, there's a difference, but by charging yourself in a certain direction, by committing and choosing to be devoted to being of service to your fellow human beings and to this planet, by choosing to be even more devoted, even more polarized in that direction without blaming or judging the other polarization, but simply by being so passionate that you're charging yourself in the direction of service to others and you are checking in with yourself frequently how you could be more efficiently of service, both by including your own nourishment and inspiration, but by then also offering that to other people in the best possible way without infringing upon their free will. So there's lots of subtle nuances and balances that you will enjoy learning more about in your real life immediate experience with polarizing yourself or rather charging or amplifying or accelerating yourself in the polarity or in the direction of service to others. Now this gains a lot of power and momentum. Eventually in mid six density, everything comes together as unity, love and light, and then service to others is all that there is. Although then at that point it is seen to be service to all because there is no separation. But the attitude in mid six density is much, much more ache and much more like the human attitude of service to others than it is like the attitude of service to self, but it is seen to be service to all. But right now, what's really relevant is for us to inspire ourselves to see how can we transcend just our own personal bubbles and really be inspired to in a way change the world or contribute or offer new reflections through following my own joy and excitement and inspiration to the best of my ability. How can I offer that? How can I share that love and that service to other beings? When you polarize and charge yourself in this way, in this direction, you will gather and harness the, the eternal ancient powers of your free will. You will regain that. You will become more as your higher mind is, and you will therefore gain more potency and more capacity to alter your experience of life, both internally as well as externally in the space time illusion. You will gain more spiritual power in that sense, not over others, but simply from your increased connection and charge and polarization and devotion to being of service to the one infinite creator in the form of service to other selves, which I often call the rest of yourself. By being of service to the rest of yourself, you are literally activating a process of self transcendence in which you become more than just your own bubble and you start thinking beyond that box and you're reaching or you're beginning to penetrate to the first stages or levels of what I call shepherding consciousness. More on this shepherding consciousness in the graduation course. So polarize yourself, which may sound weird because polarization is often 
understood to be separation or choosing sides. And in a way, that is what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that you choose sides, but forget about the other side. It's not about which side is better. It's not about choosing sides, but it is about devoting yourself to a principle of I want to be of service to others and understanding that there's lots of lots of again ancient energetics at play when it comes to that universal polarity of service to others versus service to self. And so when you tap into the devotion and the choice to be of service to others, you will literally tap into very, very profound energetic archetypes that make up the evolutionary cycles that are very determining in the evolutionary process of going through these densities. And you will accelerate your journey and you will increase the speed and probability with which you will transform into the new earth because it will be positively oriented, meaning it will be service to others oriented. So in order to increase your participation in that reality and help humanity reach it, quote unquote, faster and more efficiently and harmoniously, all of us need to devote ourselves to service to others with the inclusion of a balanced wisdom view, again, more on this a little bit later, of nourishing oneself. Thank you very much. The homework for this lesson is to see it, feel it, and be it. Meaning, many of us do not have a very clear image of what it's like to be of service to others. Or if they do have an image of it, it's very distorted by what humanity has painted it to be. So I want you, very much like in the previous lesson, to come to a calm state. You can repeat the end of the previous video if you want to, just to enter that state again where you take a few deep breaths. You relax, you breathe out slowly. And you recognize the peace that's already here, the perfection that's already here, the creatorness that's already here, the presence, the awareness that's already here. And from that space, I want you to ask for the highest vision from your higher mind as to what would your theme look like and to what extent is it part of your theme to be actively devoting yourself to service to others. And visualize how this can increase your joy, not decrease. Some people think that in order to be of service to others, they need to be sacrificing themselves. This is not true at all. It's the furthest from the truth. So visualize a possibility where you see that by empowering yourself to be of service to others more profoundly and becoming more self-transcendent and thinking about the whole instead of yourself, See how much joy you could derive from that, how much freedom and a sense of immortality and self-transcendence and not being afraid anymore you could gain from becoming an ideal, becoming a vision instead of being a separate human being with some fun ideas that it's not really acting upon. What would it be like to become the vision of service to others? What would it become, be like to become the new vision of planet Earth? And in what ways uniquely are you inspired to channel that in a peaceful, beautiful, harmonious and empowering and inspiring way? See this, open this up, ask yourself the right questions and I trust that you know which ones to ask. I just gave a few examples. What would it be like if, what would it see in feel like, look and feel like to be in this way? How could it be very empowering to me to be of service to others and devote myself to a more transcendent ideal, self-transcending idea? Ask yourself those types of questions. Let them marinate, let the visions come and then feel them. What would it really be like to be there? And then you start feeling them and as you start feeling them, they start to alter your vibrational field. They start to activate the law of attraction. You start to already immediately transcend your personal bubble and you start to feel the immortality of your soul and you start to feel that you're here to write a book using your life. Not write a book physically per se, but write a book, leave a testament, leave some kind of an example by living your life. And then as you're feeling it and it's activating itself and these opportunities are now attracted to you, you will be faced with the day, do, day two challenges of your old relationships and your old ideas and your old realities coming back at you. Don't be afraid. Keep, keep committing yourself to a higher ideal, a more self-transcending vision for all. Being of service. Commit yourself. Devote yourself. Find power in that. 
And then as you're feeling it more and more and the energy becomes part of you, you inevitably are becoming it. You are being it. You are executing it. You start behaving as it. Your beliefs start aligning themselves with that vision. And before you know it, you can never go back to feeling like a separate personal self that's lacking something. Because now you have become the vision. You've become so connected. You've become like God. You've become of service. You become self-transcendent. And this is when the shepherding stage really takes off. Again, more of that in the graduation course. Again, be humbled by this chapter. Realize, but also empowered and inspired. And realize that your true power lies in the humility of transcending your personal bubble. I want you to realize this before, again, we proceed with Empowerment 3. So do your homework. Thank you.